Hello, in the next video I'm going to show you some of the finer points of using Eclipse with Mertest. I'm going to show you how you can do a learn GUI, uh, just uh, some general tips, uh, how you can do a check property and how you can log uh, results into your report using the result manager, uh, how you can use the object pool editor and how you can do a bitmap save and a bitmap check. So let's get started with uh, learn GUI. You just click on the learn GUI icon in Eclipse and all the objects that you currently see on your screen here um, will get added to the object repository like here the static text, the sounds and notifications uh, all these check boxes and radio buttons also the tops and um, the taskbar so the learn GUI is done um, here you have the text uh, representation the, the Java code behind the object pool uh, you can switch to the GUI representation by clicking on object pool here and then you can see uh, all the objects that were added like uh, the static text, sound and notifi uh, enable sounds for uh, sound and notifications is uh, over here um, and here we have the checkbox um, event warning system events now if you want to use those in your script you can type those out uh, manually so the device name is uh, HTC Touch 2 so if I want to type it out manually you start with the device name press control space for autocomplete like this um, now because it's uh, Windows Mobile all the Windows Mobile objects start with Mo so you can type Mo, s Mo and then you can just uh, click select in the list click type Mo dialog and Mo um, well, let's check the first uh, checkbox over here. So if I want to um, see which functions are available for this object, I can uh, look in the object pool uh, which object this is. It's more checkbox. So now if I go to help and then open the function reference, you see under the Windows Mobile section uh, with the more checkbox over here which methods are available for instance the get state and the set method um, now I'm interested in the get state method so I go back to my report uh, to my uh, to my script I can use the get state method to retrieve the state of this checkbox in this case the checkbox is going to be checked uh, but I want to verify that and log that in my report so I'm going to log um, to store the value of this um, function in a temporary value uh, variable like this then I'm going to use the if else structure um, first you need to parse this, um, this string to a boolean like this else this and to log it in the uh, result we're going to use the result manager so use the get result manager function and uh, we're going to log a pass if the check passed checkbox is checked and the fail get result manager again log fail if the check fails like this um, now what I also like to do always is uh, put everything in a try catch like this Uh, and we're going to catch the mu exception like this and we're going to print the stack trace so that if anything goes wrong we can instantly see that in uh, the console 
in the Alpha in the Eclipse console, um, and uh, then we're going to throw the exception back to the report so it will still get logged in the report. So if I uh, save this. and we uh, run this script well, first it's going to build the workspace and then it's going to uh, run this script script finished so now I'm going to uh, hit refresh and you will see the result file gets added over here so if you uh, right click this file and choose open with a web browser you can see that uh, what I logged into the what I what I uh, typed in the script get locks get locked gets logged excuse me gets logged into the in the result uh, checkbox is checked like this um, you can also use the check property function to uh, uh, check attributes um, of objects without having to use this uh, um, this uh, this entire structure here so uh, let's uh, give that a try for instance, if I want to check if this uh, object here, this loud uh, radio button, is uh, enabled, I can use that like this. Uh, more loud. Check property. Enabled. If it's uh, enabled, it's going to return the value um one if it's a uh, disabled it's going to return the value zero so in this case it's going to disable the value it's going to return the value zero so I can if I run this script the check so the check should pass and it did let's look at that in the result file There you have it. Um, property enabled has the expected value zero. Now, if I were to check this checkbox here, the radio button would suddenly be enabled, and the check will now fail. So, if I run this script now, then after a timeout of 20 seconds, um, it will log in the result that uh, the check has failed. Now, why 20 seconds? Well, the script is uh, using implicit uh, implicit in uh, synchronization, so it's always going to give um, the the test 20 seconds to reach the value it is expecting. If it doesn't reach the value it is expecting in that time out of 20 seconds, then it's going to log that the test has failed. So the script is finished refresh the results and open with web browser and here you can see what it looks like when a check property fails property enabled has the actual value 1 the expected value was 0 okay um, and now uh, let's have a look at uh, the object pool behind this script over here like this um, now this is the checkbox um, uh, 
uh, where we use the get state function on. Um, now here you see the properties for this object, but you can uh, modify these here. For instance, you say I don't want the ID property for this object. You just click remove property ID. And it's gone. Um, or you can change your mind and say, well, I I actually want to add the property ID again, and you can click add property ID here, uh, and then it will be added again to the property list. There you go. You need to fill in the value yourself, though, like this. Um, here you have a list of all the objects that are um, um, in the object pool and if you want to remove one of these uh, objects you can select it and then press delete like this and that will remove the object from the object pool so if you go to the, the Java code behind the object pool you can see that the object is gone or you can go back to the GUI and see that it does not uh, get added anymore okay um, now let's uh, do a bitmap check um, like this on any object you can do a bitmap check or a bitmap save so let's first do a bitmap save like this um, good save it as loud and then we're going to do a bitmap check on it. So I'll just copy all this, paste, and I change the save part to check, like this. Um, save, and if I run this, it's first going to save um, a screenshot of that uh, object to uh, the location uh, dwimload.jpg and then it's going to use that bit that uh, that screenshot to verify um, uh, if the object looks like that so when you run your script the result will look like this saved as vimloud.jpg and it uh, looks like this and the bitmap check has passed now if you change it uh, in the application and you run the same script again of course you don't do the bitmap save again then the checkpoint uh, will fail and you will see both the screenshot next to each other, the one is expecting, and the actual screenshot. results
and there we have it. Uh, the two screenshots next to each other uh, and what the problem was, pixel mismatch. Thank you for watching this video, that's all I wanted to show you.